The Mac Observer's Mac Geek Gab, episode 779 for Tuesday, September 10th, 2019, a special episode. Welcome to the Mac Observer's Mac Geek Gab, the show where we usually take your questions, tips, and cool stuff found and mix them all together, you know, so that we can each learn five new things. Today, because we just released this week's show yesterday, today we're doing a little special thing that we've really never quite done this way before. Apple just had their announcement, their event, and we are going to talk about it. Uh, so for that, here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And here in Fairfield, Connecticut. This is John F. Braun, but then surprise back here, Bob. <laughs> here in Austin, Texas, I'm Bob Dr. Mac Levitas. Thanks for joining us, Bob. This is awesome to have you. I, is this your first appearance on Mac Geek Cab? Is that right? Yes, I've been on every other TMO podcast at least twice, but <laughs> nobody ever invited me on MGG, even though I've. Uh, been a listener since since like episode zero. I know. I feel I, I, okay. I, would have, I would have assumed that we had invited you for like, you know, episode 100 or 200 or any of those when we were actually doing things. I think once we got I to 500. I think we had. Yeah, I think we did. The, we did a, a did jobs retrospective. And I, I think yes. Bob was part of that. I think I was part of your roundtable I, remembrance. Well, no, the remembrance was just me was and that? John. The, the 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 Steve Jobs remembrance episode was just me and John. Um, but that, that but there might have been a, a special episode of some sort that I thought you were on. But in any event, welcome. This is great, man. Thanks for uh, coming to to analyze all the analysis and and you know, <laughs> I mean, look, you you're gonna get. There's gonna be a lot of people talking about all the stuff that happened. So we're gonna try and take kind of the the practical slash geek angle, like like we do with everything, and and put our Mac Geek Gab spin on this. So we will start. With the uh, the iPhones 11 uh, here and I, 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 I will start. We can get into some of the, the nitty gritty, but I think what Apple has done here is fantastic because last year they had the iPhone 10 S, the 10 S Max and the 10 R. And it, it at least to, to many of us, to me, certainly it became immediately obvious that the 10 R was the phone for most people. And then if you wanted, you know, an OLED screen and an extra camera and you wanted to pay a little bit more, you bought the 10s and the 10s Max with the iPhone 11. As they're marching through the announcement of the 11, it hits me. It's like, wait a minute. This is the successor to the 10R. This is the phone for everyone. And because it doesn't it has the, you know, liquid retina screen. It has the uh, it's six ninety nine to start, but they did add a camera to it. So it is the successor. It's not a 10 R. It's got the a 13 bionic chip. And then came the iPhone 11 pros or the iPhones 11 pro, I guess, which is where you get essentially the successor to the 10 S and 10 S max, where you've got again, the same guts, right? Same a 13 bionic chip, which is good. So same concept as the 10 R versus the 10 S. It's just the naming convention has changed. And, and speaking of naming conventions, I now get to say my X iPhone is an iPhone X because we're back to numbers, which is good. So there you go. OK, because so. somewhere we're theorizing that there'd be an SE replacement. And I guess, as you next, just said, the, they did year. that. Yeah. Next year, I, I would agree. Oh, with or you, so do. you think that's still coming? OK, there's going to be a <clears throat> lower end. The SE but, has never but. been announced on the same day as all right. the major phones. So. I and think. I believe that's because they want to sell all the higher margin items. And then when that market starts to taper off, they can rejuvenate and excite with this smaller, lower priced model. And people love that form factor. You know, that's a good point, Bob, because last year the 10R wasn't available for sale initially. It was it was delayed. Right. I mean, intentionally, like the delay was built into the release schedule where it didn't come out until October or something. But now. They all come out at the same time. So, yeah, that's interesting. Interesting. Yeah. But I think that, you know, the, the budget unit will come in six months after everybody that's going to buy a higher price spread does. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, it's nice that the 11 isn't being treated like the budget unit. It's being treated like the, the baseline unit. And then if you want the pro, you go get the pro, which I like. That's good. Yeah. Uh, and speaking yeah, I think of, it's good positioning. I think so. Yeah. And speaking of time, for the first time, instead of doing this at midnight Pacific, a.k.a. 3 a.m. Eastern on Friday morning, it all happens at 5 a.m. Pacific, a.k.a. 8 a.m. Eastern. And I I like this. Unfortunately, for the first time ever, this is the one Friday where I would have preferred it earlier. I have, believe it or not, I have a gig on Friday morning. I'm playing drums to start the TEDx conference uh, in person. <laughs> and, and we have a sound check at 730. So it's like, oh, crap. Like, when am I going to order? He's going to be phone? ordering from his phone. I've been ordering my phone from so my wait, phone. Are you in the still? green room. Oh, in the come green on, room. you guys. Are you still like, I got to get it like immediately? Wait yeah. in line thing. Yeah. I don't know. I got yeah. over that. Well, I yeah. have a re- I have a, an excuse. Same. I'm, we st- do this I'm show. still fi- I'm still finalizing iPhone for Dummies 13th edition. Ah, all right. Well, in that and case, really, yeah. I would like to have all three of them. Right. But I'm going to order. I don't know what. I'll order something so at least I have one of them in hand when I finish writing the book. John, I may I, get all three. I'm going to ask Apple if they'll uh, lend them to okay, me. Okay, because but. because I'll tell you, I, I was kind of disappointed here. So the thing is, I'm still on an eight, and I'm still paying it off. Though I'm into uh, and for those that want to, you know, get a new phone, um, at least the thing I've done for the last several years is uh, I have a corporate Verizon store in town. So that they get the phones, though limited amount, but you know they like me, and uh, you know I'm local, so I can get it from them if I really wanted to on release day. The thing is, I'm not. Uh, I'm I'm still on the fence as to whether this phone offers enough to convince me to trade in my eight for an eleven. Um, I mean the 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 camera stuff is awesome. The the, John, the one that uh, I'll just toss this out. The right disappoint there. my only disappointment is that kind of like some of the Samsung phones is that they did not reintroduce Touch ID. I'm very they will not disappointed. No face. Well, ID. Uh, yeah, yeah, they probably won't. But yeah. it's a step backward. That would be a step backward. I, I I just like it better. And no, I'll, I'll, I'll you know I can I can deal with Face ID. I can. So I can I, John, at first I would encourage you to get one on release day so that we can you know do the show in an informed right. way because that that would actually be good. But uh, but Bob, you were you were saying something about the features of this phone that might convince someone like Mister Braun to get off the fence. What, 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 I would think that? all the camera. I, well, I mean, I know I know John personally, and I listen to the show, so I know that he's into photography, and I can't imagine that you wouldn't be tickled with some of the stuff. It's my favorite camera. I, I also have a Nikon uh, point and shoot, but um. Uh, I was on a recent trip and the iPhone took much better, especially low light things. So that was one thing that they announced. So they announced so many things. In addition, I mean, I thought it was hilarious seeing the pro version had not one, not two, but three lenses. Four. I mean, it, 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 four it looks lenses. like a monster. It's got four lenses. Oh, four. The front, okay. The front facing one, too. Yeah. I could have confirmed. Yes. Okay, but three on the back, which was like, wow. I mean, how, why do you? But then when I looked at the specs on them, it's like, wow, that makes sense. So you get better optical zoom, you get better field of view. Uh, uh, almost everything is better. And because I use my phone um, as my primary camera, that may be enough to push push me over the edge. I'll say this: I'm going to Montana for a ten day vacation in Big Sky Country this week, right? I'm not even taking my SLR. I just, you know, I take it places and I never take it out of the hotel room or wherever I'm at because the iPhone really does take, for me, good enough pictures in almost every situation I'm in. And then I don't have to lug around a bunch of stuff. So I'm excited because that's an even better phone. I really like the uh, idea that you can shoot a wide shot and and a tight shot at the same time with one iPhone. I mean, for, for making things like uh, my courses, shooting two things out of one iPhone and having them both come out nice uh, is going to be awesome. So awesome. Awesome. Wait a minute, Bob. This is the first time that in, I mean, we've been doing Mac geek. uh, Well, this is our 779th episode. So 778 episodes we made it through before I got to do this. 
You're going to Montana soon. I get to quote Frank Zappa. Wanna be a dental floss tycoon. That's right. There we go. <laughs> I taught when my son moved there. I taught him that. <laughs> That's absolutely. That's awesome. <laughs> John quotes Zappa a lot. He when we were talking microphones, he would talk about the uh, the the Telefunken U forty seven. U forty seven with yeah. leather. With <laughs> with right. leather. There you um, go. So, so, so the camera is compelling. I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that. And they introduced some, uh, some new. Uh, I got to say, hats off to them, dude. The video of the cars in the snow were all yep. awesome, classic American cars. Yeah. I, I just, I, I don't know where they got them. I mean, they got the money, <laughs> but that would, that, that video was awesome of, of, I agree. of the cars and how people are. Yeah, and they reinforce this during, you know, the keynote is that people are making freaking movies with this thing, which is like amazing to me. So that, uh, for, that was one interesting thing, right? With the iPhone 11 Pro. And, and I'm curious to see where the feature delineation lives, right? Because they showed the the demo of, a, of an app called Filmic Pro. It's a third party app. It's coming. It's not out yet. No, and, no, no! It's out. No, it's out, and it's but wait, Filmic wait, wait! It's is, been out. It's been out. No, it's Filmic Pro still. Oh, okay. But but it's been out for a long time, and it's the best video app on the iPhone. But this is new new capabilities they're going to get with these extra lenses and stuff. Well, so their so, their new app will be out in. Wait a minute! I so, just wrote about this for iPhone for Dummies somewhere. So this is my uh -huh. question, though, because what they showed was that the Filmic Pro app could simultaneously capture from all four cameras on the iPhone 11 Pros, right? The Correct. 11. Yes. I wonder, can it capture from all three cameras simultaneously on the iPhone 11? It, the the guts are the same, right? Same i i a 13 Bionic mm. CPU. So good question, right? So that's that's the big question. Is like okay, how, and first of all. Like whether or not the, the the baseline 11 can do it in the, you know, versus the pro. What a cool thing to be able to do to just capture all of that raw footage. And then you mix. It makes total right. sense that Apple's app doesn't do this. Right. But but to allow a third party app to tap into those streams directly. That's pretty cool, man. Like That's really cool. Yeah. Now, on the trivial know, side. Apple. Yes. John. Go ahead, John. Go ahead, John. <clears throat> on the trivial side, though, I thought the uh, quick take feature. Now, number one, they're bouncing <laughs> back to way in the past. If, if you've been doing the Mac thing for any period of time, <laughs> quick take. You know what that is? I had one. I don't know if you had one, Bob, or you had one, Dave. But that, that was their camera. Yes. It was pretty good. It was OK for, a, you know, one of the first digital cameras. But um, but um, I, I, I can see much silliness coming from this uh, slow motion front video camera video thing. I mean, they showed it. You know, I mean, there was a kid blowing a, you know, air dryer into, you know, his I don't know who, who it was, but, you know, her mouth like got all big like it does with high. I don't know. Well, we'll see. Yeah. Slow fees. Right. So slow fees. Slow fees. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we'll see if it catches on. And so I, the version of Filmic, the version of Filmic that's out now is still called Filmic Pro. Okay. And it's really a great video camera. Um, trying to figure out because I own it, it won't tell me what the cost is unless I look at it in the browser. But I think it was ten bucks for the to unlock all. But that the lets you do like production. It lets you like look at different ways that your your stuff may look right, and then it, it also lets you record with a second camera. But it's mm -hmm. it's. Another camera, you know, another iPhone or iPad running Filmic Remote. Um, and it's got a lot of control over things that you don't get in the camera app. OK, OK. All right. Interesting. Interesting. It's what the pros are using, I think, to shoot, uh, you know, stuff that's going to end up on a big screen. Yeah, well, that's the idea is like it, like the, the iPhone can be used for this stuff, which is fantastic I, I i think that's great yeah yeah and i like the new feature that they showed and again this is one of those things that makes me question why can't it be rolled out to every iphone running the latest software but the tap and hold the shutter button when you're in camera mode and it instantly yes. starts recording a video like just do that for that, everybody please that's that's quick take and i yeah. i know why they i know why they called it that by the way 
Why is There's that? only so many good names out there you can trademark, and they had that one already. Oh, so that's they're just going to start recycle, recycling through them. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. That's a good name for it. And it they is. own that trademark. They didn't have to do a trademark search. No, that's well, they could have, but uh, but they didn't need to. You're right. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now here's another thing that maybe may convince me to move over, Dave. Now, I don't know if you noticed this. I, I think it was mentioned, but I saw it in my Twitter stream. But um, another thing that the uh, new iPhone offers is something uh, which I'm sure is near and dear to your heart, Dave. 802.11ax. Wi-Fi 6. I, it's, I believe, the first Apple. Pro- I noticed that I tweeted that out during the on our live coverage at Mac Observer Live on Twitter. They because it, I think that's the first Apple product to have Wi-Fi six in it. Right. So that's very interesting to me that the Apple chose to include that here. I think that's I think it's great. Uh, now we need routers with that, of course. But and they're <laughs> out there. But, you know, it like it, it's good to see like Apple actually jumping on the front of that bandwagon. That's yeah, that's great. Does the iPhone yeah. 11 have it or just the pros? Both. Both. Okay. From good. Um, That's good. Oh, I was going to ask that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I know the phone explicitly mentioned it, but did they mention it for the iPad? I mean, it would seem to make sense that they should do that, right? Wait, wait, wait. Oh, for the new Bob, iPad. Yeah. Ooh, that's a different yeah, question. Bob asked, does it, does just the iPhone or the iPhone Pro have it? Um, and I, and I, both iPhones have it for sure. I don't know about the iPad. I haven't looked at the specs on okay. that yet. I'm looking through this. I've got them on my desk. I'm looking. Great. Okay, cool. Right. I think in a nutshell, it's better speed, better security, right? You know. Uh, well, it's way better speed. Yeah, it operates at five gigahertz, um, but we'll do uh, what's I mean, the theoretical maximum is uh, crazy fast, right? It's I mean, it's like you said, it's 802.11 AX. I think it'll go, you know, the theoretical maximum is maybe 50 percent faster then um then wi-fi 5 which is 802.11 ac it's using a different queuing algorithm and it's you truly will use 160 megahertz wide channels to to get that bandwidth so uh, you know i mean it's all right it's hard to say in in a real world scenario what we're going to get with wi-fi 6 but um uh, but yeah no it, it could be quite a bit more bandwidth and and more efficient, right? Because it's it's using that different queuing algorithm, and it'll do uh, eight by eight, so it can use eight antennas oh. as opposed to like four by four, which is basically the max that we see with eight hundred two to eleven. Or interesting Wi-Fi 5. because they also mentioned that the battery life on these new fantastic iPhones is going to be better than the prior version, and it's like, wow, but. The Wi-Fi is going fast. So I guess the, the new Wi-Fi is more power efficient, uh, one would assume. Or they put a bigger battery or they have better power management on the new phone. Yeah, or they, they, well, they, they mentioned that more than once. It's like, hey, you get like an hour more than, you know, the prior phone. So, yay. Well, I think the A13 Bionic is probably <sighs> a big Running. part of that. They Because it's got like... <laughs> It's got, I mean, the the A12 does too, but it's got, I think, uh, four efficiency cores, two high-speed cores, uh, uh, two GPU cores. So there's various cores that can be used at different times, and that allows the phone to be, when you don't need to be cranking on the CPU, it shuts down all the high-powered cores and just runs on, you know, one, two, three, or four of the efficiency cores which would say battery life. So I think right, that's right. probably a big part of it. Also, you know, the, the so the iPhone 10 R had more battery life than I think any iPhone before it. And a big part of the reason for that was the screen, because Apple went from the OLED screen on the 10 to a non OLED back to an LCD screen. They call it their liquid retina, super liquid retina, whatever it is. Uh, but that screen will help. I mean, it's way more power efficient than an OLED screen. So because there's the less pixels to drive too. So uh, I think that's part of it. Yeah. I thought it was interesting too, that they had who who I'll call processor guy. They had him on stage. He was really digging in pretty deep into, you know, here's all the new stuff with the A13. And, um, and, and I thought the whole commentary regarding machine learning and neural engine and stuff like that was interesting, but, 
I, I think, ab, uh, and I've done some AI and, you know, uh, it's just interesting that they highlight that because I, I don't know if many people quite realize the importance or the threat, um, if you will, <laughs> yep. uh, the think Skynet and, uh, you know, Whopper um, of machines going going wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but but they, they 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 highlighted that saying, hey, you know, our, our new processor does more, you know, machine stuff uh, or intelligent things. What were you saying? I think he shouldn't. I, I think he shouldn't have started calling it ML in the middle of his talk because even I'm a geek and I it took me a couple minutes to go, wait, what's he talking about? ML? Oh, machine learning. Oh, yeah. It, he did that, it about five times. And I thought, you know, I bet a lot of people that aren't in the room are going what what <laughs> what yeah also by the way i've looked it up it doesn't look like the new ipads do have uh they go to ac okay so no wi-fi 6 okay All right. ht80 with mimo yeah yep okay that's it okay that makes so, sense okay it's but, all it's only in the phones and do we even have right. we looked but, to I'm, see? but i'm with you bob in wait, the wait, wait, uh, bob was asking a question what were you saying bob have we looked to see if the regular iphones have what were we going to look for the difference? I think there's a compare chart here. Here it uh, is. Yeah. Compare. Yeah. The no, the both iPhones have Wi-Fi six. It's okay. it, the question was the all, iPad. All and, three? Yes. And the iPad doesn't. Right. And th yeah, the iPhones are the first Apple devices with with Wi-Fi six. The laptops don't have it either, unless they snuck it in, which I don't think they did. So my other thing that I was going to say, John, is I don't know about you, but for me, when I heard four more hours of battery life, I thought, well, that would really take a lot of strain off me because by about mid afternoon, I'm always thinking, do I need juicing up before I can, you know, finish out my day? Mm -hmm. If I'm in the office, it's no big deal because it'll sit on a charger when I'm not using it. But if I'm out and about by four o'clock, I'm worried. Uh, four more hours will make it just perfect. Yeah, no, that's good. And even on the, 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 sorry, the 11, so the successor to the 10R still has an hour more battery life than, than my 10R does, which I, which has been great. So yeah, it's good. That's good. Anything. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I, I'll just agree with Bob is that the terms, uh, Apple has to be careful. Um, and I think you said this, you were hinting at this before, Bob, but using the terms machine learning or ML and neural engine, I, I've worked with that in the past uh, doing cool R&D stuff. But the thing is, for most people, that flies over their heads and they don't know what they mean. So I think Apple has to kind of reframe why that's important. I think they tried in in the announcement but i i don't think of it really uh, like they they did say like oh well you know it kind of applies to some of our photography stuff and that we can do smart things to you know make your pictures look better and it's like oh well that that's why machine learning and ai is important but I think, i'm with you on that i think apple's done a good job over the past few years of explaining to people why machine learning is good and what like and what it does and and the you know the example is for like with your um with your photos right they're able to identify they're able to to teach your computer or your iphone to identify when there's a car in the picture because they've already done you know, millions of photos on their own and come up with these pattern matching things. And then they just send the patterns to you mm. so that your device doesn't have to do it. Right. And yeah. they've explained this in a couple of different ways. I, I don't know. I thought they had done a pretty good job explaining, you know, how like the relationship between the, okay. the, the buzzwords, right. Big data, machine learning. Right. I quite frankly, I think I learned it from Apple. I don't think I understood what machine learning was until they started you know, fully explaining it. It's like, oh, it's taking letting like one or a bunch of powerful computers crunch all this data and come up with patterns. And those patterns can be matched by very, very mm -hmm. low power in computers, which yeah. is great. No, and I'm with yeah. you this time around. They did. They said, hey, we're using this technology right. to make your photos look better because your photo sucks, but we're going to make it better. <laughs> right, right. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Anything more on iPhone 11 before we move on to uh, some of the other things that were here? No. 
All right. I can't I, think of anything. No. OK, well, I'm sure we might circle back. I want to the high points. I want to take a minute, though. Um, you know, this is an off cycle episode, so we didn't we didn't sell any sponsorships for this, which is which is great. Like, <laughs> I, I, no, no, no. I like to have one that's just us. Right. But it is just us. And so I want to thank uh, I mentioned in yesterday's episode that we had sort of gotten behind on on thanking all of our premium subscribers. And so I want I, I want to finish that list. And so uh, on our, well, we had two one-time contributions come in, Kurt from Princeton at 50 and Randall from Portland at $25. So thanks to both of you. Uh, We had a slew of biannual $25 every six month contributions come in. So I want to say thank you to Bartek B, Bruce W, Doug S, Jeff S, Pierre Timo, and Joe B. They're all the ones that signed up before we started had to start collecting addresses. So uh, also on the $25 biannual plan, Daniel from London, Eric from Trondheim, Matt from Midlothian. I love saying these names. Robert from Oro Valley, Brian from Johnson city, Al Eric from Albuquerque and Anthony from 2112, because sometimes the postal code is more important than anything else. Uh, And as a rush fan, I, I appreciate that postal code. I might have to move there someday. Uh, And then lastly, but not leastly, on the monthly $10 plan, thanking Tony from San Francisco, Elizabeth from Warrington, Robert from Clearwater, Stephen from Costa Mesa, Joan from Sarasota, Ev the Nerd from Marina, Rob from Adina, Olga from Bellevue, Jason from Charlestown, Stephen from Plainfield, Luann from Albuquerque, Ward from Mesa, Kenneth from New Lambton, Nick from Mount Clemens, and very much lastly and very much not leastly, Bob from Working Smarter for Mac users. Thanks for being here, Bob. And thanks for being a premium subscriber, man. You're awesome. My pleasure. That's awesome. It's so fun being on my favorite podcast. Uh, Yeah, I I hope that it remains your favorite. You know, there's there's that risk, right? When you see behind the curtain, does it does it stack up? So, you know, the the pressure's on. So there you go. Still a winner. Still a winner. Chicken dinner. All right. Uh, (laughs) I don't know where we're going with this. What was next? What's next Apple, on the Apple, list? Apple Watch. <laughs> so uh, the first thing I, I want to talk about with the Apple Watch is sort of, I mean, Apple made it seem today. And I'm really happy that Apple Watch 5 is the watch that has an always on screen. Now, Apple made it seem like, you know, they invented fire or something with this. Uh, most other smartwatches uh, have had this feature for, you know, since their inception. So Apple's sort of late to this game. But that dude, my dumb watch does this like 24 seven. Well, I don't even have to think that, about it. Your dumb watch. <laughs> so Apple's ad was, you know, th- this watch tells time and a few other things. Right. Your your watch tells time. So there, there's a difference there. But fair. Yep. So having the screen always on. No, that's a great that's a great thing. Um, I, I agree. Yep. Uh, John, so did can- they do this for power saving? I'm, oh, I'm going to guess for power of saving. Of course. So so keeping the display on all day costs power and there's a tiny little battery in the Apple Watch. That so is- I, I, I get it. Of course. Yeah, no, it makes sense. It's just, you know, it, it there, there are examples of those scenarios where you're like, I just what like the guys, especially the one where he said, you know, you're in a meeting and you just kind of want to glance at your watch for the time and you can't because you've got to raise it way up. That, you know, all of those scenarios are nice. Um, I, I, so I'm happy about that. Uh, John, they make a titanium Apple watch now to go with your titanium Apple card. So maybe uh, you could use your titanium Apple card to buy your titanium. Apple watch. Maybe not. Well, truly I'd have to get a sander or a, 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 what do you call those things? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's white. I can't see the titanium. Well, I can see some of it. You can see but, the and, and edge, you, right? you've probably seen some of the, uh, Videos of the people, downs. yeah, yeah, totally brushing off the white stuff to reveal the metal. <laughs> yeah, I like the one with the bullet. Somebody yeah. uh, shot one. Oh yeah, sure. yeah, it's bulletproof. I carry mine in my shirt pocket now, just in case. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, I so I I mean you know I'm I'm excited about the Apple Watch. I I am I I am an Apple Watch owner. As I've said on the show, I don't use it. Every day, it is not my daily driver, but I probably wear it more often than any other individual watch. I probably wear it, you know, I don't know, two to four days a week, depending on 
how my mood strikes. It is my favorite watch for traveling because when I'm traveling, I'm not at my desk and I really like to have those notifications and that sort of thing. Uh, but my Apple watch is an OG Apple watch that I received on release day somehow magically, perhaps because I don't use it as frequently as, as you know, daily. Uh, the battery on that has yet to explode, which is surprising. It could be tomorrow, but I don't think it will be. It's not acting funky yet. But everybody else in my family that had an OG Apple watch, the you know, the screen popped off long ago and they had to either get it replaced or repaired. But um, but so I will I will be getting an Apple Watch five. And I decided that at WWDC when they announced that the new version of Watch OS would have an SPL meter in it. Uh, well, I- it, I knew that would appeal to you, Dave. Yeah. S-P-L. Ah, Sound yes. pressure level. Yeah, so you can read decibel levels with your Apple Watch. And related to that, I really like what Apple's doing with the World Health Organization. Yes. That study. Yes, there were like three items there that were awesome. So, yeah, the, the you're talking about the hearing study, right? They're doing it. Yep. Yeah, there's going to be an app coming called uh, Apple. Oh, crap. Now I can't remember. Can't research remember. Apple, Apple research. research. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Yeah. The Apple research app that will that allow you to participate in these studies and, and control all of the data in an appropriate way, et cetera, et cetera. But yeah, one of them is the, the, the a, a long-term study tracking hearing loss compared to your, your regular exposure to, you know, different levels of, of sound in your daily life. Which I think is huge. I, I mean, I think it's great. It, it, you well, know. Dave, especially for people like you and Bob that are musicians and, and do gigs and stuff. I, I thought you were nuts when we went to a show. I think it was a Boston show like ages ago. And you're like, yeah, you should get earplugs. And I'm like, well, uh-huh. why are, are you are you telling me that the band is going to play sound at a level that could harm my hearing? And you're like, uh, <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yes, for several hours. absolutely. Yes. And we were we were we were several hundred feet away from the stage. I mean, we were you know, we could see the band, but it was just like and they're play. Uh, I mean, do they really need to play it that loud? I don't know. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I guess. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. That's how it works. Yeah. But they should really, I, I don't know if they do it these days. I haven't been to a concert in a while, but do they warn, you know, attendees that, Hey, you may need hearing <clears throat> protection. Check, check, check this out. I went to see Alice Cooper a couple of weeks ago Oh. and I, for, I forgot my <laughs> earplugs and I walked up to guest services and said, you wouldn't happen to have earplugs. And they just reached <laughs> under and said, here, help yourself. Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, it's not as uncommon as you might think. And yes, bands still are as loud as you remember. <laughs> uh, or Yeah, or louder. I mean, what's what's gotten different now is the advent of what's called line arrays, which I think Genesis in 1990, 90, maybe was the first band to use these in a in a in a real like touring capacity. But the idea prior to line arrays, what you had here we are on a geeky tangent, but we're going to stay here. Um, wrong we, podcast. Too. Wrong, yeah, I know. Right. Yeah. This should be for gig gab. So if you like this discussion, go listen to gig gab where <laughs> this stuff actually happens. Uh, gig gab podcast.com. Uh, we, um, so th- we used to be that you would just put speakers on the stage and, and they would be, you know, essentially one speaker or a bunch of speakers, but they weren't directional in any real specific way. And you would crank them up as loud as you possibly could, all of them, so that the person way in the back had a chance of hearing. But what that meant was everybody in between, you know, the person way in the back and the stage had to hear it at a, you know, louder and louder volume as you got closer and closer to those speakers. With line arrays, this there's there's, you know, dozens usually of much smaller speakers that are each tuned to aim very directionally to a specific point in either the stadium or the room. And the cool part about that is that they can make the one that's aimed for the guy in the back really loud, but the person in the front doesn't hear that. And the per- the one that's aimed at the person in the front is much quieter. And they not, not only can they tune for volume now, but they can tune for EQ because the person in the back needs a different EQ than the person in the front because of the way the room's shaped and all of that stuff. So it really makes a difference. You can get it much clearer but but it's still going to be loud. You definitely want to be close at a concert. Yeah. Right. But no, I, you would think an audio engineer would kind of know these things. And maybe they were shaking their fists saying, why can't you let me design a system rather than having two speakers blasting everybody? 
uh, to let me do a more focused thing. So yeah. no, that's cool. That, yeah. that, that's cool to learn about that. So uh, our friend so Bob Kyle, like- who made the microphones that well you used to use, I still use. Uh, he mm-hmm. built a sound system. He he built. I guess it was right before Owsley Stanley built the Grateful Dead's wall of sound. Uh, that Bob built a sound system that was starting to get like that idea going. And then Owsley went kind of nuts where it, there were separate speakers. All the speakers were behind the stage and um, and every speaker was for a different instrument group. So instead of mixing everything into, you know, vocals and guitars and mm. drums into one speaker, it was like, really? these are the speakers that vocals come out of. These are the speakers that guitars come out of. These are the speakers that drums. That was, that was, that was the, the idea behind Owsley's wall of sound. Yeah. That's an interesting concept. Wow. <clears throat> well, but what the so, problem um, was feedback because right. the sp- yeah. speakers for the vocals were behind you. you say, so if, Dave? If if you see, <laughs> oh, that's right. Feedback, John. <laughs> Wait, yeah. did you say feedback? There it is. <laughs> At MackieGab.com. There you go. If you want to write us, please. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. But but no, the problem was that. So if you see videos of the Grateful Dead back in that in that era, you'll see that every singer has is singing into t- two microphones. Actually, they're singing into one. And then there's another one that I think was like, you know, 30 centimeters or something below it. It was a very specific measurement. And what they would do is they would only they would subtract one set of the, the sound from the, the speaker that was not being sung or the sound from the microphone that was not being sung into. They would subtract that from the microphone that was ah. being sung into so that the only thing noise that would, canceling it was it was noise canceling. That's exactly right. So they would only send the speakers the sound that was coming into one and not both. And then that way you wouldn't get feedback, which was really smart. Huh? So, I know I, this is you can tell I geek out on so, more things than Max. OK, before we leave the watch, I do want to say that uh, having <laughs> a longer like- battery life appeals to me because I have a four, I guess, Gen 4, and I love it. <clears throat> Two things I love. I love the rings. I lost 40 some pounds since I started wearing an Apple watch and I keep it off because the rings won't let me slack off. Yeah. I love this thing. I am so, I don't, you know, Dave, I was like you, I have a dozen watches of various vintages and shapes and sizes and colors that I would wear a different one every day or, you know, wear one for a few days and then switch. But I was always a multi-watch guy. I'm not anymore. Interesting. In fact, they've all been in a drawer for like two years now. And every once in a while, I think, well, I'm going out fancy. Maybe I'll put on a fancy watch. And I think, ah, why would I do that? I'll just put the fancy face on my Apple watch. (laughs) That's, yeah. 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 I can see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So on the watch here, actually. Go, John. Yeah, you're good. All right. So I, I was intrigued because I'm not yet an Apple Watch person. But uh, so some of the other things that I, I thought were interesting that they introduced is uh, more of the health stuff. So they had an early heart attack thing, a lady stuff thing with your, <laughs> your cycles and all that. And that's great because I, I, I recall one of our uh, uh, uh uh, listeners, um, I won't mention her name because I don't want to embarrass Allison, but she was, <laughs> <laughs> but she was going on about how health and just the Apple Watch in general, uh, the ecosphere didn't really focus on lady stuff versus right. man stuff. My argument, my my retort was that it didn't really have any anything that was gender specific, but now they're moving in that direction. So that's great. Um, the other thing is that I thought I saw them. So you guys help me out because you're watch people and I'm not. But so they introduced the GPS version and LTE version. I'm, I'm kind of confused that's, that's as how to it's the been for a while now. It, okay, so that was nothing new. That's nothing that new. There, there, yeah. there are various technologies to determine your location, and it, it was just they broke well, it out. No, no, no. So there's, it, and this has been for several years, but because Compass like, also, they mentioned Compass. That that seemed to be a thing they were proud of. So Compass is new. Educate me. Yep. There's the essentially there's the the Wi-Fi version of the watch and the LTE version of the watch, and and now they call them the GPS version. And the okay. LTE version, because the Wi-Fi version also now has GPS, which is great. It didn't used to. 
Uh, and, and I don't think that's new. I think that was watch four, Bob, but correct me if I'm wrong. I, I think you're right, but I don't know because mine's cellular. Yeah, right. So the cellular one always had GPS, but it, but that also meant you could make calls and use data from your watch without having your phone nearby. Otherwise, if you have just the Wi-Fi or as they call it now, just the GPS version, the only data connection that your watch gets is via your phone. So if you if you go out, say, for a run and you don't have your phone with you, all you have available to you are the things that are on the watch. So you won't get phone calls. You won't get notifications. You can only stream music that you've offloaded directly to the watch as opposed to. Correct. If you've got a, a data connection, it can do all of that. Or if your phone's nearby, it can do all that. So just to paint that picture for anybody that, that wasn't aware. There you go. Yeah. No, it was a good question, okay. John. Yep. Yep. Um, all right. So, yeah. Um, what else did they have? Eh, ambient light sensor. Is that new? I don't know. No, I don't think that, so. No, we'll close that out. Okay. Yeah, I don't think so. I think we're done with the watch, no. but uh, it's evolving. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll get one. I don't know. There you go. You should, you should, John. I, I think you would like it, John, to be perfectly They're li- honest. It's a life you. changer. Yeah. It's a life changer. It's one of those things, you know, I, when I don't have it on, there are things about not wearing it that I miss. I just also happen to enjoy wearing different watches. Now, I know people that wear an Apple watch on one wrist and then, you know, whatever else they want to wear on another wrist. And, you know, Ooh, yeah. I never thought of that. There there's, a, there's a thought since our, I like my other watches. I just don't wear them. Our mutual friend <laughs> Maria, Bob, is one of those people. She wears two mm. watches all the time. And sometimes even wears two Apple watches because because <clears throat> she likes to have extra tracking and sleep tracking and all that stuff. So and okay. she is. A but I know she is. A but geek. I know, Dave, you like classic mechanical, finely crafted watches. I, I like the idea. So a, a mechanical watch and really a, an automatic watch, meaning a self winding mechanical watch is to me a very it's a work of art. Right. I mean, it is a piece of technology. It's just not a piece of electronic technology and there's something very elegant Mm -hmm. about a very finely crafted piece of technology uh on your wrist that doesn't require a battery right like it's self-contained it does its own thing i really like that and you can i mean you can you can pay as much as you want for a mechanical watch you could pay hundreds of thousands if not millions of dollars for some tourbillon or something but you can also get a, a like i have a swatch mechanical watch uh that's like I don't know. I think it cost me 99 bucks or something. And it's it's actually mm. pretty accurate and all that. So, yeah, I mean, but I like them all. So, yes, I do. Yeah. I do. And for a while I had a Seiko. Seiko is a, you know, yeah. good brand. So, yeah, sure. Or was. Yes. Yeah, you know. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I have. But it, it was have. funny to see the devolution of. So, you know, for, for a while it was like Swiss watches, mechanical watches are the thing. <laughs> and then all of a sudden you had these quartz watches come into the scene. And it's like, what? It, that, that you, right? you, me and Brian should, Brian Chaffin should have, and maybe the four of us should have this conversation. No, Brian is, I, I, I thought I was well-versed on the history of horology. Brian is, uh, he is a real student and, and perhaps a master of, of all that went on. And there was a very interesting thing that happened with the courts revolution. Yeah. But I want to talk about right. Apple TV plus, because I think this is really interesting. It, you know, Apple TV plus prior to today was a curiosity for me. It was like, OK, so Apple's getting into the content. creation. Another business. streaming thing. Exactly. And it was like, how is Apple going to differentiate themselves? How, how do you go up against Netflix? And the answer is exactly four ninety nine. Like, no, the answer is free, Bob. They are basically giving this Wonder. away to anyone that buys an Apple product, right? So you get a year. Well, I saw that. Yeah. Family plan for free for a year. With and any. With any Apple, like and, Mac, uh, iPad, f- iPhone, right? Think how many Apple products most of us buy every year, you know? I mean, at least one of the big yes. three, maybe. Right. So. And boom. Like They instantly will get. You know, millions of customers. It's really, really smart. Now, you well, know, and announcing four ninety nine, I think, was brilliant, and not calling it an introductory price, which nope. it probably is, but not calling it that. I don't think gonna, it is. It, I think four ninety nine is the right price for a video service. Honestly, I think their music services over. I think all music services are overpriced. I, I think, I think music services should be somewhere between three and five dollars a month. 
But but that's a whole other conversation. Boy, you're a musician. I'm I'm surprised to hear you say that. No, this isn't my desire. <laughs> this is a a market reality, right? Like that's what th- that's the the price at which these services actually start to make sense for consumers. I think I think I think they're overpriced right now. I I but there's no money in 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 that for musicians you have to make your money a different way right it it used to yes. be it used to be that people made mostly labels but uh, there was lots of money made on the sale of recorded music that is not happening you know i just saw what was it um i think billboard maybe it was rolling stone published an article that said uh in i think 2020 they maybe even 2019 they expect LP vinyl sales to eclipse CD sales. It's like, what? well, well, because no, who's buying CDs, right? Vinyl is a, a thing. It, it, it either is a throwback thing or somebody likes the experience of using vinyl. I'm not going to get into the sound quality. It's, you know, there's a lot of confirmation bias that goes on there, but it, but you know, people like a vinyl experience. No one <laughs> likes a CD experience in a different way from a streaming experience. So if you're a CD person, you're just going to buy You're just going to sign up for streaming music or buy it, you know, as a digital download. That's it. So yeah, no, right. it's no great surprise, but the only thing, Dave, go. All right. Apple TV plus. Yeah. Yay. I'm going to shake yeah. my fist. And if you're receiving my fist shake, good for you. But <laughs> There's too many freaking streaming services now. So you got Disney, you got Apple. I, I, I'm with Netflix. I pay Netflix, uh, what, 15 bucks a month for what they have. And I upgraded to the Ultra HD because I got HD stuff. But it, <sighs> while what Apple is offering seems to be a good value, I, I'm just not comfortable with the whole ecosphere of we have – premium content that you can only get from us, but it's only five bucks a month. The thing is you're, you're, you know, it's a, a dying by a thousand cuts, right? Or, well, or whatever. Yeah, no, you're is right. that, There's everybody is offering their, you know, like for example, I, I actually, even though I'm a Trekkie, I do not have CBS all access. Sure. Because they offer premium Star Trek content. Um, and I like Star Trek, but I don't know if I'm uh, the thing is I already pay my cable bill and I get CBS, but I don't get CBS all access. It's like, well, why not? I mean, I'm paying my cable company all this money. Well, and, and so, then um, and then so, HBO. so it just said to me that the, 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 the universe of streaming content and exclusive ex- exclusivity, um, we call it exclusivity. There you go. Yeah, is yeah. not good for it's confusing. Well, that's, that's I think we're saying, you know what? <clears throat> I think Go we're ahead. saying the same thing because it, it, Apple, by effectively giving this away to for free to uh, not all of their customers, but mm-hmm. m- many of their customers, essentially by doing that, they get to, to shortcut to the front of the line. Right. In terms of listener or viewer numbers and all of that stuff, whatever content they are finally taking this war chest of money that they have stockpiled Mm -hmm. and effectively (laughs) buying their way into this business because they don't have to charge customers. They don't have to turn a profit with Apple TV plus for a very long time. And so they can wait everybody else out and and move things on. Now, will they get rid of Netflix? Uh, no, I don't think so. Will no, they, but they'll buy Disney. Will they get rid of Disney? <laughs> yes, they, they'll buy that. Right. Will they get rid of <laughs> HBO? That's an interesting one, right? Because HBO, it, like Apple. Is part of. Well, but HBO has a few shows that people pay to watch, similar to CBS All Access, right? There, there was Game of Thrones. There was, um, uh, what was the one with Kevin Spacey that was, that was fantastic? I can't even remember. The House of Cards, right? Like th- there were, you know, there were a few, there are a few things on HBO that, that were blockbuster hits. Apple TV plus needs a blockbuster hit, but they have a much better chance of getting there if they give the service away to millions of people and it can become mm. like, a, oh, hey, I'll watch that. <clears throat> if it's good, now you've got people that already subscribe and they're talking about it. And Apple has been betting on their betting their future on their services business for a very long time. And I, this is. Oh, absolutely. The, the culmination. It's a cash cow. 
it's the long game, and I think that the they're playing game. it smartly. Yeah. Yeah. They'll, playing- they'll end up buying they'll end up buying a movie studio or one of these big conglomerates that's got a big vault full of content. You'll see. Well, I because they can afford it. They're gonna buy, you know, whatever's left. I don't know, Paramount, Fox, they they've all bought each other. Yeah. And and some of them are part of Com- maybe they'll buy Comcast. Okay. I don't know. All right. But the, they will acquire a large library of content in the next year or two. Mark my words. Yeah, no, okay, I think you're totally so no, right. Apple, deal. Apple TV is is awesome. Apple but, um, TV Plus, TV Plus, Apple TV Plus is Apple TV a, TV looks to be awesome, but I still see gyrations, if you will, in the uh, streaming entertainment marketplace. And, well, uh, I have to say, not remember, settled. remember the old days when all we had was cable, and all we screamed about was, "We want to buy it a la carte." <laughs> Right. So right now, here we are. Be careful what you wish for. (laughs) You got it. I will say one thing. When Apple announced that they were giving away Apple TV Plus with, you know, any new purchase of a device, it made me wonder if perhaps Apple could be so kind as to, you know, carve out a portion of their their war chest there and maybe give us all a few extra dozen gigabytes of iCloud storage for free with our devices, or at least let us, you know, if you buy a device, you get five gigs per device, not per account, something because five gigs of iCloud storage, you know, we, we deal with this all the time here on the show, right? No, nobody gets uh, enough storage to do really much of any, if you're going to use your iCloud storage, you must buy more than the default. And I feel so that's like why sh- that's why they do it. I know. <laughs> I, <laughs> they can afford not to, but that is why. That is no, you're totally right. Yeah, yeah never mind. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's an easy I, answer. I answered my own question. Yeah, you just had to point it to me. So, all right. Um, the iPad. I I uh, always I've been a huge iPad fan. I was glad to see them refresh the mini. And I like that this seventh generation iPad goes from 9.7 inches to 10.2 inches. I, I think that's pretty good. So I'm excited about that. Uh, any any thoughts on that, uh, Mr. Bob? Dr. Bob, sorry. My my apologies, no. esteemed sir. Nope. I'm a big iPad fan. Um, I'll look at this when I need to replace my iPad someday. Um, I'm just... You know, I don't know. My I have an iPad 9.7 inch ni- iPad Pro, so it's first generation, but it works. You know, it's yeah. like I don't feel like I, I need faster, or and it doesn't have faster Wi-Fi, <laughs> so it's not something I'm looking at. But I'm not looking at any iPads this year. Sure, I'm um, I'm thinking iPhones, and I think maybe a MacBook Pro now. That makes sense. What about you, Mr. Braun? Uh, I still have an iPad Air, but um, what did pique my interest? So you know there were incremental changes, but three twenty nine starting price, and then they even announced the education thing two ninety nine. Are you yeah, kidding yeah. me? Yeah, those are some seriously low prices. Yeah, the only uh, thing is, I would say for for any iPad, at least me personally, I need a keyboard or a keyboard case in order to make it useful. Oh, Otherwise it's well, just that new smart, that, that full size keyboard uh, on the iPad and, and Apple's not the only one that offers one, right? Like I've reviewed the, the bridge keyboards mm-hmm. here. Those the bridge are, keyboards are amazing. They're fantastic. Uh, that's changed the way I use my iPad. Totally. It okay. used to be my, cons- used awesome. to be a consumption device. Yes. Now it's both. Right. And I'm with you, Bob. And I, I, I remember people shaking their fists saying, Oh, the iPad's only a consumption and not a, productivity device but at least for me the way i work i need a keyboard yeah and and that's and that's um, and they're and apple makes one and bridge makes them no you're that problem that's a yeah and problem. and several people make them so uh the, the the incremental uh boosts to the performance and you know separating ipad os from ios which you know kind of makes sense because they're they're kind of two different worlds right I think it makes a ton of sense, and yeah. I'm glad they did it because it means they can do cool stuff to iPads without having to uh, either make excuses for why it's not on the iPhone or not do it because they couldn't do it in <laughs> iOS. So, you know, I mean, <clears throat> it's obvious that there are two different use cases. You know, one is a phone and everything else. The other is a computer without a keyboard. Yeah, that's right. 
Right. I still remember the uh, the ads. It's like, what's a computer? <laughs> yeah. Remember those? Yeah, <laughs> for sure. It's like, hi, honey, what do you do with your computer? What's a computer? And the kids, you know, do whatever kids do these days on an iPad. So that was that was fun. So there were two quick tips that I caught in the uh, in the mm-hmm. event discussion today from Apple that I I'm not sure. Well, I certainly had if I knew them, I've forgotten them. So I wanted to share them. The first was that with uh, iPad OS 13, a simple pinch to use. I believe it was Greg Joswiak's uh, Jaws's term. A simple pinch on the keyboard turns it into the floating keyboard. And that can be a really handy thing. But but getting between them, if you don't remember the gesture, you won't do it. So the simple pinch on iPad OS, and I'm sure we'll talk about this again when once iPad OS oh, comes on. out. Yes. I'm tr- I'm trying this. No, I'm just trying it. Yeah. A yeah. Pinch on the keyboard, huh? So, yeah. A pinch. I turns must. It- I'm, I must have been sleeping when he said that. Oh, did 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 uh, <clears throat> Tim call him Jaws? <laughs> It sounded did. like jazz. I thought I said jazz. I thought it sounded like jazz, and I had yeah. a number of people say that. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> then there's one that I really, I'm sure I didn't know about, and that's with the Apple Pencil. You can swipe up from the bottom corner, and they did the bottom left corner. I don't know if other corners do this, Bob. Maybe you know. But you swipe up from the bottom corner of the iPad with the Apple Pencil to get into screenshot mode. And then once you're in screenshot mode, you can save a full page PDF of a web page, which is cool. So uh, we're putting those in the show notes here. So if, if you forget the, the gestures that but they are, I was going to say my pencils in the other room, but I can certainly try the keyboard pinch. Yeah, cool. And I'm trying uh, it now. And, uh, and then there was Apple arcade, which I think at four ninety nine a month for the family is a pretty cool thing. I, I have no doubt. It was interesting that they chose Frogger, uh, or Frogger in Toy Town from Konami as the first of the um, of the games to highlight. That is definitely a game that will appeal to not just kids. Uh, you know, any it certainly I played a bunch of Frogger. John, I know you and I played a bunch of Frogger together when we used to go to Arnie's place. So, um, <laughs> you know, right. So like, I, I, I know yeah. that that was. An intention. I mean, nothing Apple does is an accident, but it was an intentional thing to say, "Hey, look, there's games for everybody here." Um, that that it's interesting to me. And the play. I never music really. Video, Sayonara, I Wild never Wars. played that, dude. My game was Spy Hunter. Well, there you that go. That was the best game. There you go. So Missile Wars. Command. Missile Command. Uh, that was good too. And uh, Galaga. And uh, oh man. So many classic video games, but I love yeah. Spy Hunter because when you started kicking ass, it would crank the music so everybody around you knew that you were like an advanced geek. And speaking of cranking the music, it is time to do that here too, folks, because we've hit the end and uh, this went this went far longer than I expected. I, in reality, of course, any listener knows I should have expected that this would go far, far longer than... Uh, than the, the 20 or 30 minutes I thought it would because it's not what we do. Well, what do you seem populous here? I mean, come on, Dave. Yeah, right. That's right. Yeah. Bob, anything to, uh, any last thoughts to add before we, uh, before we, before we leave people, anything from the announcement or anything else before we go? Did you say feedback at MacGeekGab.com? <laughs> we did say feedback at MacGeekGab.com. Okay. Dave, did you see, hey, f- did, <laughs> did he say feedback at monkeygap.com? And I think he for you did. To say. That's right. Yeah. All right, folks. Uh, that's where you can email us. Of course, if you're a premium listener, premium at MacGeekGab.com. Come on, be like Bob. Visit MacGeekGab.com slash premium and check that out. If you would like. It really is a no pressure scenario. It, You know, it, everything that everyone does here it sort of makes this all work. The questions that come in, your tips, yeah. listening is a huge part of it. So, yeah, just keep doing what you're doing. And if you want to do more, that's what MacGeekGab <laughs> Premium is about. Honestly, you know, one thing that you could do go to macgeekgab.com slash sponsors and there's there's i've sort of highlighted at the top of that page all of the active sponsors just go through and click on each of them and check out each of their web pages whether you buy or not that's between you and them but i would love to know that each and every one of you went and uh and perhaps is a, a favor to us here 
you, you know, you just go and check them out, learn what it is they have to offer. And if it's in, if, it, if it's a value to you, then great. If it's not great, no problem. But that would that would actually make a huge yep. difference. The thing is, if we like them, you may like them. That's too. it. Exactly. Cool. Because we have pretty good judgment most of the time. Well, most of the right? time. Eh, most yeah. of the time. Yeah. <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, thanks so much for listening, Bob. Thank you so much for coming thank on the you, show, Dr. man. Thank you, Bob. Yeah. Thank you for having me. You guys are awesome. It was so much fun being on Mac Geek Gab. Have yeah. me again anytime. I'm always available for you guys. Okay. And yeah. just a disclaimer here, um, you know. Because the lawyers told us this. He's not a real doctor. Oh, yes. Right. That's true. Hey, Bob. <laughs> yes? Is there, is there any one thing that comes to mind? Perhaps, you know, we like to give advice here. Any lasting, universal, perhaps the best piece of advice that you could give someone ever. Does, does anything come to mind? I, I've waited almost my whole life to do this. <laughs> Don't get caught. Made up.